friends, Jackie Ball Heiss and Clomp and Stampers. I have another card today using Timeless Tulips. This one's really got my heart. I think you guys figure that out by now. But today I'm gonna do something a little bit different that I haven't shared with you yet. And we're gonna take these tulip images and kind of turn them into a watercolor look. We're gonna do some watercoloring with them. So it's gonna be different. Now I've shared lots of cards with this, but I've never done this technique with you. And it's simple because you know me, we don't do anything hard. So let me go ahead and let's jump right in. I'm gonna flip the camera down and we're gonna get stamping. Hang on a sec. So here's the stamp set I'm using today. Now don't forget, I have a class right now that you can get for free, but today's the last day. And it's 12 different projects using the stamp set. 12 different ones of what I'm gonna share with you today. Or you can just purchase the tutorial. So if you've missed the deadline, you can still get the tutorial for all 12 of those projects. Now there'll be a link down in the description of this video to my blog post that will take you to all the information for that. So today though, like I said, we're going to do a completely different technique that I haven't shared yet with the stamp set. And it's watercoloring. So we're gonna use a piece of watercolor paper instead of the normal Whisper White. And I have Melon Mambo and Old Olive, and I have an aqua painter. Now, if you've never used an aqua painter before, basically it's a paintbrush, but it has water in the little reservoir here. So this screws off, you fill it up with water, and then when you start using it, you kind of give it a little squeeze to get that water flowing down. Let's see if we can get it going here. It'll start coming out of the... I haven't used this in a while. There we go. Okay, now we've got water coming out of there. You want to make sure that that water is coming down through your paintbrush. So I'm going to set that aside and we're going to just go ahead and start. Let's start with a stem. Now, kind of the key here, you have to do one piece at a time. So we can't like stamp it all. So we're going to have to start out here with a tulip stem. Okay, then I am going to take my wet paintbrush here and I am gonna just go right over what I stamped. And it just kind of blends out that image and makes it look watercolored. Then we can take a leaf and I'm gonna only use one of the leaves here. There's three different ones in the stamp set, but we'll use one and, you'll, and I'll show you a tip here in a second. But look at the difference there. So as soon as I've stamped it, I'm coming in with water now, if you ever feel like you have too much water on that paintbrush tip, just go ahead and dab it on that. Um, I just have a napkin sitting there, so that'll kind of take some of it up. So there is one leaf. Now, notice how I stamped that one going this way. What I'm gonna do is flip it upside down when I stamp on the other side, and I'm taking kind of that flat part of it and putting it up against the stem. So that way, I mean, it's kind of deceiving, I guess. It, it makes it look like it's two different leaves. So you, so you really have six different leaves, I guess, in your stamp set. And then just blend it out. Now, before we switch to the pink, what I wanna do is give a little squeeze, get some water, and then go on my napkin here and make sure I have all of that green off. So that way we won't mix our pink and our green. And then let's ink up in Melon Mambo, our big tulip here. We'll put that one on top of the stem. Now watch how this one changes. I think this one's really drastic. I think the colors get a lot darker, but I am just going over that whole image. Um, I'm not worrying about having to shade anything because we've got the natural shading in this stamp. I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous stamps. You know, they're pretty on their own. Um, as you can see from a lot of the other projects I've already shared with you, but look at the difference that adding that water on it and getting that watercolor look. So there's our first tulip. And then I think I'm gonna speed up the video here while I go ahead and I do the second one. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how I finish my card. There we go. So I think we're just gonna stop with the two tulips on there. Now, to put our card together, we want to make sure this dries, so I'm going to wait just a second. Now, if you're impatient like me, you can actually use the heat tool to dry it a little bit. And actually, before I stick that onto my layering piece, I'm going to grab my greeting. I've got the strong and beautiful stamp set. This is in the annual catalog. I really love a lot of the greetings in that stamp set. So we are going to use our black memento here and I have to make sure I'm not upside down. I'm really bad. I don't put my stickers on, 
Um, but if you buy stamps nowadays, the stickers stick really good. Years ago, they didn't, so that's where I got in the habit. Um, so now the stickers. If you have any questions on how to put the stickers on the back, let me know, because I, I have shown that in a couple of my videos. So we're going to ink up really good. Watercolor paper does have a little bit of a texture, so when you stamp on it, you want to make sure you've inked that stamp up really good, give it some good pressure, and then hold it there for a second to make sure that that ink transfers good because we want a really nice, deep black image. So there we go. Now let's put our card together. I have a piece of basic black here, and we have adhesive that's not coming out. There we go. Um, I'm not sure the size of these pieces, but I will have a link down in the video description that will take you to the blog post. I'll have a picture of the card along with a list of all of the products that I use. Um, plus that information on my tutorial for the 12 different projects using the stamp set. So there we go. Now, since I used old olive, let's use an old olive card base. And then I have some of the old olive designer series paper. And when I was cutting this, I couldn't really decide. Do I like, there's, I have four different options for prints here. No, nope, don't like that one. Hmm. I'm kind of thinking I like the gingham. Let's go with that one. Big decisions. What do you think? If you think I should have gone the other way, let me know. Um, I love this designer series paper that comes in all of the different color groups. Oops, and we did that crooked. This is why I like that liquid adhesive. If you lay that down crooked, you can pick it right back up and move it where you want it. There we go, that's better. So let's, we're gonna keep this card nice and simple. Let's grab dimensionals, because it's tough for me to make a card that I don't use dimensionals. Um, here's a little dimensional trick. As you're getting down to the end of your dimensionals, I love these kinds of pieces. They work good, especially for, for big layers like this. There we go, let's peel those off. Um, and again, just a reminder, hop on over to my website. I'll have all the information on this card, plus my tutorial for this stamp set and all the details you need. So let's go ahead, let's offset it a little bit. And there we go, I think that's all we're gonna do. It's a very simple, we don't have a lot of layers and embellishments, but I love that watercolor look. Um, you know, just for fun, let's take, I think sometimes it's fun to compare things side by side. This is just a scrap piece of, of Whisper White that I had sitting here. Let's stamp this tulip like that and then again I just have one leaf here so we'll go that way with it and then we'll flip it and we can come up this way and there's look at the difference exact same ink but here I use that aqua painter painter to to blend it out look at how much more vibrant it looks it's just completely different so with that guys I'm gonna go create some more cards to share with you later on I hope you've enjoyed this video this technique I hope you give it a try um, and as always, if I can help you with anything or you have any questions, make sure to get a hold of me. I love helping people learn to make quick and easy cards. And even though this was a technique, it's still quick and easy. So until I stamp again with you, have a stamp happy day.